I'm not ashamed. What did Achan steal and what happened to him? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Joshua on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Joshua 7, verses 16 to 26. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Joshua 7, verse 16. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Joshua 7, beginning at verse 16. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarites. And he brought the family of the Zarites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Now Joshua said to Achan, My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing fifty shekels, I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth, in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones, still there to this day. So the Lord turned from his fierceness of his anger. Therefore the name of that place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day. In our last lesson, we had God explaining to Joshua why Israel lost the battle of Ai. It was not because God sought to abandon Israel or brought her to Canaan for this purpose. It was because of sin, in that someone had taken from Jericho that which was to be devoted to the Lord. As long as Israel didn't purge this sin from among them, God would continue not to be with them. God told Joshua what to do in order to purge the sin from Israel. God would identify the man who was responsible, but Joshua had to bring Israel before him by tribe, then by family, then by household, and then man by man from the selected household. And from verses 16 through 18, that's exactly what Joshua did. God selected the tribe of Judah, then the family of Zerah, Zerah being the second son of Judah by Tamar, then the household of Zabdi, after which Achan, the son of Carmi, of the household of Zabdi, was taken. When Achan was selected, his selection being made by the Lord, you might have expected that Joshua would have, have him taken and killed on the spot, but that's not what Joshua did. No, he first wanted Achan to give glory to God and make confession to him and tell Joshua what he had done. Joshua wanted nothing hidden from him. How would Achan's confession give glory to God? Because it would show Israel that although the sin was secret to man, it was not secret to God, for he sees all. And by confessing one's sin before God and man, one is humbling themselves before God and submitting to his judgment. Achan didn't argue with Joshua. He didn't seek to minimize or justify his sin. No, he fully admitted to what he did and where the things which he took could be found. He admitted that not only did he sin against Israel, being the root cause for the defeat at Ai, but more importantly, that he sinned against God. And this is important for us to remember. Yes, we may sin against man, and that's bad. But what's worse is that when we sin, we sin against the name of God. What Achan stole was a beautiful Babylonian garment, with Babylonian here meaning a garment from the land of Shinar, where Babylon would be located. He also stole 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold. The reason he took them, he coveted after them, with covetousness being the root sin that leads to theft. They were hidden in the earth in the middle of the tent with the silver under it. In order to confirm what Achan said, Joshua sent messengers to Achan's tent, and there they found the booty. 
which they brought back and laid before uh, laid them before the sight of Israel. In confessing his sin, Achan did what was right before God in that regard only. Sin needs to be confessed if we are to obtain God's grace and mercy. Does this mean that Achan was forgiven of his sin, at least as it concerns his eternal destiny? I will leave that judgment to God, for the text does not say. However, with sin comes its consequences, and the consequences for this sin was death, not only of Achan, but of all that he had. Joshua thus brought Achan, his children, and all his possessions to the valley of Achor, which is a valley just outside Jericho, and there the people stoned Achan with stones and burned him with fire, him and all his possessions. After he was dead, Israel raised over him a great heap of stones that was still there when the book of Joshua was completed. Now the question that arises from verse 25 is, did Achan's children die with him? If you notice, verse 25 says that Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire. Many commentators, when adding Joshua 22.20 to the mix about Achan not dying alone in his iniquity, thus conclude that Achan's children must have died too. If this is true, then the children had to have been accomplices to the crime, for Deuteronomy 24.16 told us that children would not die for the sins of their parents. But must we conclude from the text that Achan's children died? I believe the answer is no. All of Achan's possessions were to be burned, including his animals. So the them in verse 25 could refer to the animals, and Joshua 22.20 stating that Achan didn't die alone in his iniquity could also refer to the animals. We must be careful when we draw conclusions from the text that those conclusions are supported by the text. In truth, the text is ambiguous, and so uh, so are any other scriptures that refer to this incident, so I can't make a definitive conclusion one way or another. And it doesn't matter either, for whatever was done was a just punishment for the sin committed. After Israel did this, God turned from his anger and would be with Israel moving forward. We'll see Israel's next attempt at attacking, attacking Ai, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Joshua chapter 8, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends, so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.